Okay, we've got a free body diagram. Excellent. Um, now, but this doesn't tell us uh, enough about what we're looking for. We're looking for a third force to put it in equilibrium. So we want to relate these forces to the net force, which in equilibrium will be zero. Um, and so uh, going directly from a free body diagram, and I know some people on the test would love to just draw in a vector like that or face it the other way. That's not going to do it for us. What we need to do is we need to take this and put uh, put it into a vector addition diagram. And so our 65 newtons here, our 92 newtons there, and then we stop and we say, okay, what are we thinking about? We're saying that the net force is F1, F2. So let's say the F1 is the 65, the F2 is the 92. And the F3 is our new force, or unknown at this point yet. And those all have to add up to, well, equilibrium, zero. So they all have to make uh, go around and come back to the exact same point. So the starting point and the ending point have to be the same for it to have a net force of zero. So that means that our third force would have to bring us back to zero. So tip to tail, tip to tail, and back to zero for an F net of zero. And so uh, this is our F3 in there. So now it's time, uh, the concepts looked after, it's time to move to a little geometry. Um, and the first question you're probably thinking is, hmm, can I assume that this is a right triangle there? If it is, then I can just pull out the trig and solve this. If it isn't, then I would have to go to cosine law and sine law. Now, that's a bit of a hint in itself in that if you are doing physics 11 or physics 20, um, then we don't really leverage the cosine law and sine law. So uh, it might be a little better assumption that this is a uh, right triangle, but we don't have to assume. We can say, okay, if uh, we can break down this 92 into a vertical component, and a horizontal component. And of course, if the horizontal component comes out to be 65, then we know that we are right back to here and straight up. And so we know that this F3 is vertical and it is a right triangle, therefore. So let's just check that for ourselves. So 92, and this is 45 in here. And so 92, and we're going to say sine or cos 45 because we're looking at the horizontal. And if you're good at your geometry, you probably caught me there and you say, well, you know what? Sine 45 and cos 45 because 45 is right in between them. Uh, they're both going to come out to be the same anyways. But if you didn't catch that, that's no big deal. Um, and so we stick that into our calculator and we end up with 65. Newtons. And so that tells us that yes, indeed, it does go back. The horizontal movement in that 92 brings us right back so that we're going vertical all the way up to the starting point. And so excellent. So we can treat this as a regular trig problem. Um, and so that would mean that 92 sine 45 would give us our F3, the value of our F3. And um, now that we know also after we're done this check, um, knowing that it is a right triangle, we could also pull up Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. That would solve it perfectly good as well. Of course, once we've established it's a right triangle. Um, but this way is great. And again, because um, we don't even have to pull out a calculator if we don't want to, if you do happen to recognize it, um, that this would be the exact same here. And so what that tells us is our F3 equals 65 newtons up. And there's our final answer.